The news. The news. The news. Behind the status media lies. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Brock Lawley program. My name is Brock Lawley. I am your fearless host, and this is the show and the segment that we sift out the media lies. There's so much out there, right? It's white noise to some extent. You got the social media, you got all the print media, the dinosaur media, you got the television clap trapping, yap 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 Those guys are all bought off anyway. And right here at this show, we take all that, you know, riffraff, and we just sift it out. Sift it out. Did you ever see those little coffee bean workers? They're like, nope, 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 that bean doesn't go, that bean doesn't go, oh, that's a good one, this one, that's exactly what we got going on here. It's a sift, 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 wheat from chaff. Because there is so much of it today, right? There's so many there's so many power players, so many people competing for power. The truth dies on the altar. So that's why we do this. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to understand Trump's appeal, and I know there's still a ton of people who do, um, I'm going to turn your attention to a YouTube video, and I'm going to post this on Courage Culture's Facebook page. Um, I usually don't send you to YouTube videos because it's very, very hard to distinguish uh, in the radio format or in the podcast format. But this, this is uh, the reason I'm, I'm turning your attention to this. So this is, this is Trump at, a, at a, a rally. The first five minutes of this video, I think, just exemplifies why he's resonating, why people are drawn to him, why it's working. And there's just so much confusion out there. I think it's funny that what are we into now? I mean, we got to be at least a year. We, gotta, we, we have to have been trumpeted for at least a year here. And the guy exceeds expectation after expectation after expectation. All the, the experts are 100% wrong 100% of the time. And what I think is funny is they're not even asking any new questions. As, you know what I mean? There's no new questions from, like, the punditry class or the, or the Washington elite class. Like, you know, ducking and shifting. Here this guy is basically sealed up or, or captured the Republican nomination. And they're still asking the same questions. It's that the voters are morons. It's... It's the same stuff. So anyway, I offer you this YouTube video again, Courage Culture Facebook page, if you want to see it. That's the best. Uh, and, and again, I just I really think it's worth five minutes of your time because I think when you see this, this interaction with the voters, um, you're gonna you're gonna understand it. I mean, Trump's down there with the coal miners. I, I saw him with those coal miners, and I don't know that in my lifetime I have ever seen political instinct like that personally. I mean, granted, I was a young boy when Reagan was campaigning and all that stuff, but I don't think I've ever seen just sheer political instinct like that. People just think the guy's going to fight for him, and it's a, it's a it's a really amazing thing. You know what I mean? I know that uh, I, I saw a piece the other day, and it was called "The Only Thing That's Going to Stop Trump Is an Act of God." I think it was. Uh, Oh, I can't remember. I'm drawing a blank. But anyway, I think that's true because the guy kind of traced all the steps to Trump's ascension, you know, met expectation, then, the, the, you know, all the powers that be, never going to take the next step, take the next step, uh, never going to get up on the next rung of the ladder, get up on the next rung of the ladder. And, and I mean, by like baffling numbers. And now I see, and maybe we'll get into this in, in the further stories because this is all just Trump denial. There's a phase. I don't know. I'd be interested in talking to a, a psychological professional like a, a, a head shrinker about, you know, what people are going through right now. Cause I think it is shock and all you got all the, you know, the, the red, uh, true elephant, you know, slurping GOP loyalists. They're just shell shocked. The elites are just beside themselves and that's, that's all self-interest. So I just dismiss that as such. And then there's a whole lot of other people, many of which are in my family that are just outright, you know, refusing uh, to support the guy under any circumstances, which I think is foolish. Anyway, we'll get back to that. The tow truck driver who refused to tow the girl with the Bernie sticker on her car, her busted down car, her Pinto or whatever. You got to see this girl, by the way. She's straight out of Central Casting, like a, like a Berkeley grad or something. She looks the part. Anyway, look, I don't, I don't want to live in an America like this. All cards on the table. I don't like stuff like this, right? Um, this is what America is now. Based on your politics or based on the way you think, we are going to boycott you. We're going to deny you this or deny you that, deny you basic humanity, in this case chivalry. So on one hand, there's that. So at the, at the, base, at the basic level, I just can't support something like this. 
On the other hand, it really it really uh, uh, amuses me. Here you have this young, clueless college girl, right? She wants 90% of, of, of a businessman's income. She just wants to take, 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 take. She She's full-throated socialism. And here you get this private industry guy. And actually, when they interviewed him, he's like, look, I've had bad experiences with these Bernie people before. They stiff you on the bill. They don't pay you. Maybe he's right. You know, I mean, I, maybe I have to factor in some of that stuff. But essentially, you know... She wants government, 24 hours, government, 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 government. Until she needs a pro- until she has a problem, needs an actual solution. Then what she does, she picks up the phone and calls, calls a private industry. She calls some Joe Blow that's actually earning a living. This is the very same guy who's till she wants to rape. Why? To, I don't know, to, to, to divvy up his profits in, in noble ways that only she sees fit. So, I mean, the whole thing's ironic and, and, and humorous, Right? Turns out when you, when you got a problem, when you need the Ghostbusters or whatever, you pick up the phone. Who you call? You don't call Obama. You don't call bureaucracy because you know they're not showing up. No, you, you call Joe Sixpack with a tow truck who's grinding out a living, who you villainize just because he makes a buck or two to, to raise his family. Irony can't be thicker. But this is a double-edged sword. There it is. FoxCarolina.com. FoxCarolina.com. Paul Ryan does not endorse... Trump yet. I got to tell you, I'm tired of this kind of stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, he won. He's a presumptive nominee. Denial stuff is unbelievable, specifically because I remember these people all making pledges and forcing Donald Trump into a pledge. Look, it's a two way street, right? I mean, I got to tell you, the the establishment class of, of this country gets on TV, literally. And they started talking about how Trump needs to move, how Trump needs to change, how Trump needs to alter. Now, that very well may may be. I have my own opinions on Trump. I assure you of that. But you you got to rationally walk with, with me on this one. So the GOP consistently fails, consistently, at everything, at galvanizing voters. Their whole party, their entire voter base has left them. They have proven themselves to be as yellow belly as humanly possible in the political arena. The American people have given them sweeping victories after sweeping victories, and they've done nothing with it. Then they leave a gap. They leave a hole. They leave an opportunity. Donald Trump, the populist, fills it. Now their response to him filling it is, you need to come our way. You need to come our way. You need to move towards us. These guys are so out of touch. I mean, I don't know. I guess I could come up with some clever way of saying that. I, I feel like I've done, I've said it a million different ways. The GOP is hopeless. They're hopeless. They just will not stop. They will not stop. I don't know. I, you know, bringing the bringing the party together does Donald Trump have some? You know, does he have some responsibility in doing so? Yes. But moving towards the 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 entrenched rhinos in Washington, D.C.? No. No. And I don't think he's stupid enough to do it. I don't know that Ryan and the, and the, and the GOP establishment guys, I don't think they factor in that they might be harmed more by this little shenanigan than Trump. As they're like, we're holding our support. We're, gonna, we're, not, we're not sure what we're doing. The guy's gotten more votes. He went through 16 other candidates. That's not a vetting system. That's that's not that that counts for nothing. Listen, guys, I had different candidates too, two of them, but he won. This is getting ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. And the GOP, as if they have any credibility at all, they're out there trying to leverage. And more shenanigans. And I caution my fellow uh, people who, for good and for silly reasons, have pause when it comes to Donald Trump. The latest is that Trump posed in front of some taco bowl for Cinco de Mayo and said he loved racist. (laughs) Said he loved Hispanics. And they're out there calling him racist, 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 racist. Now, here's my problem with this. This is clearly stupid, right? This is just, you, you can tell that, right? The people out there making fluff of this. Here's my problem. There is almost certainly going to be reasons and causes and situations in which we will need to sound an alarm. We will need to make a big deal about something, likely with this exact candidate. In other words, I think he will cross lines. There will be times when, you know, 
this passionate pushback and this, you know, turn up the volume all the way kind of reaction is necessary. But spending that on a taco bowl, on a, on a goofy picture of Donald Trump that he tweets in front of a taco bowl saying he loves Hispanics and that this makes him the, the deb bells of Bob himself and horns and tail. You know, problem, guys, when you blow hard on the horn every time, the problem when you, the boy with who cries wolf, is that when you need some sort of credibility, you don't have any. You know, some of the problems with, with Trump is that, you know, if the guy passes gas, it's, it's like a big deal. Now, in some ways, that helped him in his campaign. But it's just ridiculous. And to anybody with any objective objectivity is looking at this and just being like, that. that's just silly. CNN has this piece. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Mc, McAdams, this is the guy I told you that got removed from his job from Marquette, from Marquette um, simply for having a, a, the view that man and woman should be married. That's that's it. That's all he did. And by the way, there was a there was a, a woman in his class. This is actually the backstory. So there's some young, pump, zombie creation of the left in his class she raises her hand and says i will not even be in the company of this type of opinion and she just goes on her you know leftist laundry list of of, of race race is big and homophobe blah 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 blah. so the guy blogs about it and he gets the guy gets removed from his job now here's another aspect of nuance here so the way these universities keep these insane professors most of the time, leftist professors from top to bottom, is they have this thing called tenure. You get tenure. I don't know how many of you are familiar with it. I have a couple of friends who are, who are tenured professors. They get tenure. And then at that point, you can really put the pedal on crazy. I mean, you can write any kind of Marxist nonsense. You can say any kind of Marxist nonsense. And the theory is, is that you're able to have intellectual um, you know, latitude and longitude. You're able to kind of move around with some grace intellectually and, and you, there's, there can't be any consequences for it. Well, what's funny is this guy's a, a conservative, so they're going to strip him of his tenure. But what they don't realize is by doing this, oh yeah, in this case, they want to throw this guy out of the wolves. But by doing this, they'll just undermine their tender system, tenure system. They're just going to undermine it. Not that they haven't already by creating these mobs of leftist students that suck on their finger in a fetal position if you say something they don't like. So my point is here, their own stupidity, their own bigotry of other ideas, their own intellectual dishonesty, their own intellectual inbreeding will bring down the whole system because it's dependent on tenure. Otherwise, you have to get some fresh blood, some actual intellectual, honest people in there teaching, which would be great for the nation instead of these incestuous biosphere of thought that we call university system. So the irony is that even though this guy seems to be a sacrificial lamb, they're just going to destroy their own system here. And of course, that's what left does because it's toxic acid and they don't even realize it. And it just destroys and eats through everything it touches. Wall Street Journal has that piece. Hillary's latest email twist, twist, ladies and gentlemen. The hacker that broke the story back in the U.S., this individual with a desktop, basically, that hacked Hillary. Um, By the way, is it fair to speculate, at least, that the trained Chinese and Russian hackers are able to do so, too? I don't think that's a leap. This guy's making all kinds of noise. Look, the woman, is she's guilty. I mean, she's just outright guilty. This whole thing's a, sh- a charade at this point. Who doesn't think Hillary Clinton was doing nefarious things with her, her, with her bathroom server? And who doesn't think it was to cover up all the other shady things she does, both with her foundation and her political career, and trading American influence? I mean, the woman's just flat out guilty. And she's the presumptive Democratic nominee. Wall Street Journal has that piece. You know, you might notice that there's a lot of problems in the world, and there are. For example, there are children in this country that do not have the education opportunities they deserve. There are families in this country, 93, I think, million families to be exact, that are not working. So, I mean, you you can, let's push those two things, and there's a host of other things, into a category of serious problems. Well, not to worry, because the left has their sights on theirs, right? E-cigarettes, regulating e-cigarettes. Yes, they're going to destroy, and this is an estimated 1,000 businesses. I don't, God only knows how many people that employs for water vapor. That's what an e-cigarette, it, it emits water vapor. So, so get this straight. These smoking Nazis banned cigarettes. So then the innovation and the entrepreneurship of America created an alternative, a clean alternative. So this guy can be smoking an e-cigarette beside you, absolutely no secondhand smoke. But the left doesn't like it. Why? Who knows? They don't care if you're smoking weed in Cali. But if you're smoking an e-cigarette, they're going to regulate these businesses out of business. Just imagine this. These people bought brick and mortar. They, they ordered product. They're, they're serving a clientele. In many cases, they're even weaning people off of cigarettes. 
And the federal freaking government and the state bureaucratic hellhole governments are going to put these people out of business. It's, abs- it's just absurd. The left wants to constantly control your life, ladies and gentlemen. But what about abortion, Brock? What about abortion? What about abortion? It's, it's, it's madness. It's absolute madness, ladies and gentlemen. And it's not going to stop because they absolutely think they're better equipped. They want to control your life. It will not stop. It will not stop. They came for the e-cigarette businesses and you didn't do anything because you don't work for the e-cigarette businesses. And then they came for the coal miners and you didn't do anything because you're not a coal miner. And then the bureaucratic Nazis that think that the EPA Nazis that think they've got to control every weed on your property will consume your life in a way that will become unthinkable in a few years. Bureaucrats don't know anything but to feed. They just feed and grow and feed and grow. Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. You don't want to live in that world. There's a lot of examples globally. It ends in concrete structures and poverty. It ends in people gathering around a TV to hear a foreign movie because the propaganda of the state is so thick. It becomes controlling every aspect of your life because that's how they maintain power. And it starts with silly stuff like this. Fight them. Fight them. Fight them. Les productions.